All right, hey everybody, this is Brian from PMB Homesteading. I wanted to take you down and do a little yard walk and show you some of the stuff that we've got growing in our yard on a little urban homestead. As you can tell, my voice is still, you know, got a little bit of that cold in it. I don't know what that thing came from. Jeez, oh, the ice cream man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> if it's not people using their yard equipment and their blowers and their gas petroleum things, it's the friggin' ice cream man. <laughs> anyway. Here's the uh, sweet potatoes. You can see the, the new regrowth on these uh, coming in. These slips are doing pretty well. I mean, even this one here, I thought this thing was going to be completely dead. And you can see there's regrowth happening on that slip. You know, and these other slips that, you know, came a little looking a little healthier, you can see there's pretty good growth coming on those. So I'm happy to see that. That's the, uh, the Georgia Jets. And these are the uh, Japanese purples. They do have kind of a purplish tinge to the leaves. So. I mean, maybe it's the veining or something, or, you know, maybe I'm looking more into it than I, I really see. But uh, that's one of the sweet potato uh, trash can barrels. I trimmed the uh, autumn olive this weekend. I got a little trim, trim crazy because I was getting tired of seeing this big bushy mass that was blocking my watering system. So I trimmed him back a little bit and did a little chop and drop down there. There's the other trash can sweet potato barrel. You can see it's got really good regrowth. Over here, we're kind of coming to the end of our pea season. The uh, the field peas are really trucking along, though. You can tell the difference between the field peas and the, uh, the uh, snap peas because they have the purplish flowers on them. And the bees really love this. And you can see up in our uh, pear tree here, we've gotten pretty tall. I mean, that's way over my head, or I can reach. But you can tell the other peas, the ones that are in direct light, are really starting to, to die off from the heat that we've had. We've got some. Uh, Hairy vetch here. It's growing up through. I always love the little flowers in these, and I think the bees do too, so I'll leave that alone. I'm getting a lot of our squash coming in now. There's our little patty pan. You can see there's a lot of them down there on the And then, let's see if anything on that one. I think we harvested this one pretty recently. There's some eggplants forming back there. That's one of the snow white eggplants. There's an F1 Michael down there. There's another patty pan. You can see there's a bunch of them forming on there. That's going to be so good. I can't wait to get those. And there's our, one of our pugs, Gus. He thinks it's time to get some peas. Here's some of our cover crop that we let grow through here. It's our buckwheat. Helps bring in a lot of the pollinators. The bees love the buckwheat. You can see we've got a squash that looks like it's almost ready down there on that one. So we like to harvest them when they're a little, a little bit bigger than that, but not too big. There's some yellow They're forming down there. There's a couple that are on the ground. Looks like they got a little wet, might be rotting, but that's okay. We've got plenty. There's our column or apple. You can see the apples are starting to get pretty good size on there. And you can see the tree is like really doing well with that added weight. So I'm glad to see that. I can't believe how thick that trunk has gotten. I mean, this is only like a two and a half, third, this is its third year in our yard. So, that's really good to see. Got some tomatoes over here. I got the first ripe one of these uh, Montesino F1s over here yesterday. Paul and I split that. Oh, there's another one down there. It's getting almost ripe. So the F1 Montesinos coming along. You can see we got a lot of nice tomatoes going there. Some more of the uh, nasturtium going. Let's see. This squash here, I think, is dying in some ways because the little bunny rabbits are living down in there. I saw one of them scooting into this, this yard in the, uh, the garden box the other day. So I don't know if they got in there and bit the root or what, but the new leaves look to be coming out and they're all healthy, you know, like this. But these here, I don't know what's going on with those. Some kind of rust colored, like it got stressed or something. So we'll see what happens with that. I got enough squash growing in here that I really don't care if something happens to one of these. And I, you know, Paul and I were getting at least breeding, you know, maybe two or three squash a day now. If you figure it out, you know, what we're doing. I mean, cause we harvest, you know, five or six and we have them sit down and eat. And I take them with me for my lunch. 
And you can see there's you know, more yellow down there. That's what I love about not marking these. You don't know what they are. You just look around and find some squash. I'll come over here and I'll lift up a leaf and how do you do? There's a gray griller. There's a yellow squash. It's hanging out right there waiting to get picked. Here's some more gray grillers. There's another good size one there back there. Scarlet runner beans are starting to take up there. I'm surprised these peas are still doing as well as they are. Especially with, you know, the bright afternoon sun right over there coming through. I did thin out our uh, salmon berries. Some of our currants we have to harvest. We already did one harvest, but uh, need to do some more here. Kind of push this one back up over here because it was falling down in the bird bath. There's our other trash can potato, sweet potato barrel. More currants. These things are so good. You see, these are the two bushes. That one over there and this one here. I took cuttings. Actually, I think I took just cuttings from this one. That I made all of my current bushes out of. And so now each one of my current bushes, now we have, I think, 30 or 40 of these in our yard. So that's going to be a nice uh, nice addition to all the currants that we get to pick. There's Paula over there, you can see her <laughs> st stamping around. And you can see I came through here with our electric weed whacker and topped all of our clover. Because if you don't top it, it's going to get really huge and bushy. So we try to make it, you know, smaller and we just leave the cuttings there. We just kind of let the sprinklers and the rain wash everything back in and it feeds itself. All that nice, nutritious, uh, detritus matter. You can see our tomato plants have gone insane with their growth. Here's the sunflowers. And I made a new addition. This is my uh, Urban Homestead Hillbilly hanging baskets. We didn't have any liners for these, so black trash bags. <laughs> the nesh, ne the what do they what would you call that invention through necessity <laughs> of my my homestead hillbilly logic <laughs> i figure once they uh you know they start to get big and they flower they're going to kind of hang over this thing here so you're not really going to see this but you know hey i don't i don't really care what you know people think <laughs> i'm going to have beautiful flowers here on the top of this otherwise ugly trellis and my cucumbers and my beans and my peas are all going to grow up here they're going to intermix it's going to be a nice massive wall and food production. That's all that counts. I'm making, I'm making food for our stomachs. It's going to be healthier than anything you can grow in a store or buy in a store. <laughs> oh, Gus. Hey, guy. Gus. <laughs> He's getting so old. I don't know if he hears me half the time. <laughs> Did you get lost? Well, they're too far by the neighbors. They've got some people over for Fourth of July weekend, so I'll just give you another little shot here of the, uh, the yard. Maybe head back this way over here. All this reseeding of clover is really coming nice down here. I just love having this clover in here. Makes us feel like we're walking through a forest garden. Let's see, let's go over here. There's the plant propagation bed. Automatic watering coming on. We got our apples here. This tree's doing pretty good. Doesn't feel like it's too too weighed down. I come through and I kind of bounce and check every now and then. Make sure it's not gonna you know split and break or anything. But, uh, seems to be doing pretty well. And we'll kind of close off over here. There's some little birds over there. This is our strawberry, one of our strawberry patches we have on the property. And out of this, this strawberry patch, as well as the ones we have on the other side of the yard, and in our front yard, we've gotten, what did she say? 27 quart bags of strawberries. That's insane. I mean, to me, that's just like, that's, that's free money. And we have all that saved up for, uh, all throughout the year for, you know, protein drinks and smoothies. These sunflowers are looking really nice. Look at, look at how healthy they look. 
cannot wait until these things get big enough to go up here and we're having these nice sunflowers going all the way across there. That's going to look cool, along with the grapes. Especially when these grapes start to produce. I don't know if I'll get any grapes this year, but hey, you know, I just planted them last fall, so I'll give them a break this year. There's our little wildflower area. I've actually seen two different types of butterflies now. I saw some of the, I think, monarchs. I can't remember if the monarchs are the yellow ones or these, like, uh, orange-colored ones. But they're pretty cool when they come around in the evening. All right. Well, that's kind of the yard walk for this week. Maybe uh, next week I'll uh, try and get in the upper yard and show you the garden boxes up there. Let me do one more panorama here with me standing on the deck, and you can kind of just check out everything that's going on. What was that? <laughs> Have to blurb that. That was a robin almost landed on your head. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's sitting up on top of the. Uh... <laughs> I wish I would have had the camera turned around. <laughs> That's scary. I felt the hit. The claw it like it like tried head. to land on your head. I think it thought you were like a piece of I don't know statue art. <laughs> All right. Well, never a dull moment here on the urban homestead. our panorama shot. <laughs> I'm gonna leave every bit of that in the video. Well, they must I'll have to I'll have to say the uh, <laughs> when you see my wife scream she'll use a swear word so you may want to cover your kids ears. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. All right I'll talk to you guys again next week. Bye.